39 to go now while they measure. Looks like a low level of fog or something. A very low fog level coming in. Not, it doesn't seem that it'll disrupt play in any way. It's very <laughs> thin and very low. It's just kind of it's just interesting. Looks like something out of a Star Trek episode. Don Melford, for the record, was about a foot short. Fourth and a foot from their own 23, 24 for, for Tam. They really have no choice but to go for it. To give to Domino straight ahead, and if he falls down, he should have it. Let's see where they spot it when they stack it, and he got the first down, though not by a whole heck of a lot. Let's give him maybe a yard or two. That's all he needed. Out to the 25. First and 10 from the 25. I think Mike Evans now would pretty much just as soon just get some points on the board. His team coming up on you know, two, three and a quarter games without a point. Johnson sprints to his left and throws deep over the middle. He's got a man. It's Burke and it's intercepted. Ryan Garcia with the interception at the 45-yard line of San Rafael. That was an outstanding defensive play. That was a pretty good pass. And Burke is open. I mean, this ball wasn't that badly underthrown. That was just a good catch. That was a very nice catch, much like the first interception we saw by Moses, the over-the-shoulder catch. Garcia doesn't come up with that ball, and Burke's got six points. That was a fine defensive effort. The second interception, third turnover for San Rafael, the defense. Three big takeaways. First down, their own 45, 149 to go in the period. Gazzoli goes in motion to give his straight ahead to Skazafava. And he bangs out across midfield to the 49-yard line. Correction, Emerson straight ahead. Pickup of six. Call it seven, and it'll be second and three. It'll get another look at the Bulldogs going back on the ground. Seven carries, 37 yards now for Emerson. Casoli now coming in motion to the left, and they go right back up the middle. This is Paul Williams, and he looks to have the first down down around the 44-yard line. Got someone down there midfield. And the clock will stop while they tend to the injured player. And uh, I will correct myself, it was Emerson again, not Paul Williams. We will have it. Okay. Another look at San Rafael, that ball control at this point of the game. And he did get the first down once again there, tending to the right leg of the injured Tam player. Can't make out a number. Three to go in the third quarter. 20 nothing San Rafael. They will have a first and 10 at the 45 of Tam when play resumes. And again, we can't make out the number until we're not going to. Number 24, Finn. Matt Finn. Matt Finn. And he's trying to walk. Been a senior linebacker, 5'10", 185-pounder. And he seems to be walking all right, relatively speaking. It's a good sign to see him coming off in their own power like that. And as soon as Matt gets to the sideline, 
the officials will wind the clock. And San Rafael has a first and 10 at the TAM 45, looking to add to their already 28 to nothing lead. And now someone didn't, it was the official that saw something he didn't like. Decides he likes it now. <laughs> and the pitch goes to the right side to Gazzoli. Gazzoli's got some blocking in front of him as he turns the corner, pick up of about five out of, down to the 40 yard line. It'll be second and five. It's the first time Gazzoli's carried the ball and hasn't found the end zone. Oh, correction. Third time he hasn't found the end zone, first in his last three carries. He's carried five times, has now 14 yards and two touchdowns. Very productive. I think he'll take those numbers. He yeah. <laughs> figures, let, let the other guys go move the ball between the 20s, give it to me when I don't have to work so hard to find the end zone. <laughs> Second and five from the 40. Could be the last play of the third quarter. Gazzoli goes straight ahead again and is thrown backwards before he gets to the first down marker. It's going to be a couple yards short, and that should bring us final two seconds of the third quarter. We have reached the end of quarter number three, a scoreless third quarter. But San Rafael, riding the crest of that 28-point first half, continues to lead 28 to nothing as we head to the final quarter. Maybe you've dreamed about going to college. Maybe college just seems like a dream. But if you're even thinking about going to college, now is the time to get ready. You know, a lot of college students today are the first in their families to go, and many receive special grants, scholarships, loans, and even get part-time jobs. Don't let money problems get in your way of going to college. If you really want to go, and you're prepared, college can be a reality, not just a dream. Oh, the environment again. Earth Day was last year. Hey, make it Earth Day every day. A message from the National Wildlife Federation. Ooh! Ooh. Twenty-eight to nothing. Our score. San Rafael has been in command throughout. And next week we will be down in Kent Field, the Redwood Giants taking on the Marin Catholic Wildcats. And we mentioned about how the MCAL has been kind of beaten up a little in the non-conference portion of the schedule. Well, Marin Catholic, the one school that wasn't, they went three and zero and looked very impressive and establish themselves, at least in the minds of, of most of the people who have seen them so far, as the team to beat in the MCAL. So we'll get our first look at them next week. Right here, as we start the fourth quarter, it'll be third and two for San Rafael. The give is to Scozofaba. He's trying the left side. He's got some, got some room and a first down. Inside the 35 to call it the 32. We're going to see him try to change directions here a little bit. He's running a sweep left, and now he decides he wants to go right a bit. Pick up a five. First down and 10 at the 32. 56 yards rushing on 12 carries now for Skazafava. And Underman has only had to throw two passes so far in the second half. Some trouble getting the offense set. Now he's got it lined up the way he wants it. Skazafaba comes in motion to the right. Hunterman play fakes, rolling, throws over the middle. He's got a man, Dan Stewart wide open. Touchdown, San Rafael. Well, as you mentioned, he's only had to throw two passes in the second half. Goes for his third, and it's pay dirt again. That, another touchdown for the Bulldogs. Stewart's first of the game. He's getting in on the action. Here we see him rolling right, and he's wide open down there. Letterman now 16 passes. He's completed eight, one intercepted, 128 yards and three touchdowns. And I think Dave Wiley and the San Rafael Bulldogs will take that kind of production out of their quarterback any day. Whitman adds another PAT. And with 11-18 to go in the ball game, it is now San Rafael 35 and Tamil Pius nothing. Dave Wiley and crew certainly needed this one to get their confidence going. 
And you heard Mike Evans in the pregame show say that, you know, he's seen San Rafael struggle a game or two early in the season, then turn right around and shut people out, and they're doing that here tonight. Well, that's why they play preseason games. You play preseason to get your team ready for the season. And from what I've seen tonight, San Rafael looked ready. They, they, they certainly the very ready to, to say the least and it makes you wonder if Sonoma Valley beat this team 40 to 6 just how good is Sonoma Valley take another look at the touchdown Dan Storch is wide open over the middle looked like he split a seam and under hit him in stride for the six points so you really have to wonder now about that Sonoma Valley team as like I said as to how good they are because they, they, they beat this team 40 to 6 and they rolled up some other impressive scores and uh, well, it's just one game, too. Uh, you know, this this game is, I don't think, is a reflection of both these teams. I don't think San Rafael is this good, and I don't think Tam is this bad. The, the score doesn't really indicate it. It's quite quite possible, but once it, once it, I think the big thing is, is, has been San Rafael's ability to control the ball when they've had it. it you know, as much as they have played and been impressive defensively, when Tam's hung onto the ball, they've been able to move it at least between the 20s. But San Rafael, when they've had the ball, has just been able to control it and keep Tam's offense off the field. The kickoff will come down to Hassani Domino. And he's heading right back up the middle of the field. Breaks one tackle, breaks two tackles, breaks four tackles, and is finally dragged down across the 40-yard line at the 41. That's by far Domino's most impressive play of the night. Oh, definitely. And this is why he's known as such an explosive player. You see him dragged down there, and another flag is going to bring this one back. Well, Mike Evans has a young team, and the things you will see from young teams are penalties and turnovers, and we've certainly seen a lot of that out of the, out of Tamil Pius. And, you know, in one respect, you have to feel for Hassani Domino because a player of his talents. It's got to be frustrating because this is a team that will develop. This, this TAM team, but Domino in his senior year right now just doesn't have the support that he had last year when he was the third leading rusher in the league. Well, that's a good point. Uh, you need the cast around you. In football, you need help. It's very tough to do a lot of things by yourself in football. Ball at the 15, it'll be first and 10 for TAM. Eugene Johnson has gone all the way at quarterback. He keeps it on the option, now pitches to Domino, and he finds the corner, runs over someone, breaks a tackle down the sideline, still on his feet out to the 30-yard line, the 40-yard line, and a very impressive run by Hassani Domino. Well, we knew he could do this all along, and Sandra Fell, as you mentioned time and time again, has just kept the ball out of this man's hands. But I mean, when he does get it, he goes. He ran over two players, and then almost had he kept his feet, he was probably gone. And he ran over Dan Stewart, one of, one of the free safeties, and, or the strong safeties. Stewart goes 171 pounds. Domino's got a little on him, but just ran right over him. Stewart comes to the sideline and I don't know what hit me, coach. <laughs> Quick give on the inside this time goes to Fenn, or Quinn, rather. And he gets nowhere. The pickup done by Domino in the previous play went for 24. This one goes for nothing, and it'll be second and 10. Now you get a look at the San Rafael sidelines. Stewart, after just making his first touchdown catch of the season. Johnson will roll left, and he's throwing down the sideline for Domino, and the pass is broken up incomplete. Kind of hung it up there a little too much, and Spencer Emerson was able to come over and break it up. Rosenberg are also there on the, on the coverage. Here we'll see Johnson looking down the left sideline for Domino, and I guess they said he didn't have it under control. Johnson has struggled. He's hit just one pass, one out of six. He's had two interceptions. The one he did hit went for 42 yards. And it'll be third down and 10 now. Straight back to pass this time. Well, now he's rolling left. Fires on the run, and the pass is he's broken up once again. Number 45, Andy Truitt, with the defensive play. Here we're going to look at Johnson, this time trying the other side of the field. Just can't hang on to it. And fourth and 10 from the 39. 
And let's see, was Mike Evans going to go for it or is he going to punt? There's a timeout on the field. Who called it? And Tam called it to discuss this. 9.38 to go. 35 nothing ball game. It's really 50-50 here. I mean... I would, I would tend probably at this point, realistically, you got to look at it, you're not going to win the ball game. And you don't want to, you know, I would I would consider kicking it here. But, you know, you're not, like I said, you're down 35. You haven't done much all, all night. Try and save some confidence for your kids. You don't want to give Santa Rafael the ball back here on 40 again. Um, they've really only had to go, with the exception of one or two drives, half the field for their touchdowns. And they've proven they, how much they like that prospect. So, I would, like I said, I'd kick it. Plan. If, if Stan Rafael's going to score again, make him go the length of the field. That's a good point. Uh, you don't want to get the score ran up on you. I'm sure San Rafael wouldn't do it on purpose, but if you give him the ball at the at the 20 yard line, they're, they're, it's almost impossible for him not to put it in. Yeah, and and here again, you're not you're not talking about college kids or NFL players. You're talking about high school kids, and no matter who you put out there, they say, hey, I want a touchdown too. Everybody sure. else has got one. <laughs> and again, it's nothing personal, but they just want to have the fun and be able to walk around campus with their buddies and say, hey, I scored too. Well, they're going to go for it. Johnson avoids the rush, throws down the left side. The pass is caught by Kamani Davison. He steps out of bounds at the 45-yard line of San Rafael, but it's enough for a first down. Pickup of 16 yards. You're going to see a nice catch right here by Davison. And a pretty good pass, too, on the run. So it was a good first down for the Hawks here. And now they've got it at the on the San Rafael side of midfield at the 45. Domino the single setback. And a flag goes, and this could be a delay of game. But a little movement, the right guard actually. And that is that's what they what they call Jeff Wood. Flag on that one. It'll be first and fifteen. Ball back at midfield. Johnson now two of eight passing, but two completions good for 58 yards. Two wide receivers to the left side, and again, Johnson drops the ball, and it's still loose. Who's, who's got it? San Rafael has come up with yet another turnover. That's been this game in a nutshell. San Rafael coming up on the positive side of all the mishaps of Tam whether it be a penalty or a turnover, and, and they got the ball again. We should mention that Eugene Johnson is making his first start at quarterback. Uh, Kimani Davison went the first three games in, in, in going back to, the, to a more traditional wishbone. Mike Evans decided he wanted, uh, he wanted um, you know, to get the more athletic Johnson in there. New quarterback for San Rafael is number 21, Zach Hansen. Hansen, a 6'1 junior. And here we go again with the flags. Still 8.57 to go in the, in the ball game. Just to finish that thought, so Johnson, maybe there may be some nervousness on his part. Another delay of game call. So it'll be first and 15. Johnson, maybe a little nervousness, not quite used to working with the center. The center not quite used to, to working with Johnson. So these are these are things that, as we as I, as I said earlier, that you know this team will work out and this team will develop. I mean, this is the Johnson and Davison are two of the mainstays of a Frost Soft team that lost the MCAL championship on the last play of the year sure. to Marin Catholic last year. So these kids can play. Pitch to the right side is number 29, Ryan Garcia made that nice interception a while back, and he's tripped up, lost a couple of yards. There we get another look at it. Trying to get outside. Nice defensive play by the Hawks. Loss of two with the penalty on the on the previous play. It'll be second and 17. He was able to stay in bounds though, which keeps the clock moving. 6'1, 178 pound junior, Zach Hansen in relief of Chris Unterman, who did a heck of a job. Give up the middle to Garcia, and he's got the two he lost in a couple of the penalty yards back, but it's still going to be third and very long. Garcia getting some 
we're carrying the ball tonight. He's just a junior. So again, you know, both of these teams, somewhat young, pick up a four for Garcia. You know, they've got the seniors in a couple key positions, but for the most part, young teams. And you, you really have to say that it is a rebuilding year for San Rafael. Any type of, I mean, a major rebuilding year. They lost 20 guys that started for them. Yeah. They got just two starters returning. Anton gives straight ahead again, third straight time to Garcia. And he's wrapped up uh, near the original line of scrimmage. Give him another, give him pick up of four yards. And it'll be fourth and 10 for the Bulldogs. And if I'm not mistaken, this is gonna be their first punt of the ball game. It's very fortunate for Sandra Fell to get uh, Fourth and ten, and San Rafael set to punt the ball away. Hassani Domino back deep for the Hawks. Skaza Fava kicks it, tries to kick it away from Domino. It does, takes a slight tam bounce, and is going to be killed. Phil Gazzoli downing it at right around the 20-yard line. Once again, it's been all San Rafael, 35 to nothing. They scored 14 in each of the first two quarters, and then after a scoreless third quarter, Chris Hunterman, a 32-yard touchdown pass to Dan Stewart. Nice shot of the moon, half, half crescent. Uh, kind of the, looks like the, the McDonald's guy a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Mac, <laughs> yeah from, the, from the Mac tonight thing. Or Mac, uh, excuse me, Mac tonight. There you go. Don't want, don't want to give McDonald's more credit than they deserve for that inventive ad. A, another timeout for San Rafael. Boy, it's a good thing for them. They're up by 35 because they're... There are all sorts of confusion. That's going to happen when you go to the second and third teams. Is this, is this a, there's our friend Fritz, the kicker, with the, the haircut again. It looks like he got hold of one of his buddies next to him. It's nice when you could have eight or nine of your starters like that sitting on the bench this early in the fourth quarter. You know you've had a good night. Well, and, and again, you know, this at the end of the year, it takes the, it'll take their toll. And this is, you know, seven minutes at the, seven minutes of, of wear and tear they're not going to have. Eugene Johnson, meanwhile, has gone all the way for Tam at quarterback. He's trying to run the option. He gives to Domino, and he's wrapped up immediately, right as he got across the line of scrimmage. Again, we'll see Asani. Still getting his work in. Well, he might be a little rusty himself, um, having missed the, the better part of two games with, with his ankle injury. Mike Evans said he, he's about 90%, said had last week been a league game and they really needed him, he could have played, but they decided not to, to risk it. Second down and nine. Johnson gives, and this is Domino again. And he's out close to a first down, not near the 30-yard line. 12 carries, 31 yards before that one for Domino. Well, that's a good point. Uh, the worst thing he's going to get out of this is a tune-up, so you may see a lot more of him in Tam's next game. Sitting out two games when you've really only played one other, well, only half of another. Really? He, he heard it the first series of the second half against Sacred Heart. So he, he's really only had half a season, you know, half a game to get ready for the season. Johnson to throw on third down. Gets it out in the flats to his buddy Davison. And come on, he's got the first down. Out to about the 35-yard line. There again, we see Tam going to the air. Pickup of about seven. First and ten. As we approach the five minute mark of the ball game. Davison getting a block. Now swings it out. He's got, or Johnson rather, he's got Davison. He gets away from a man down the sideline, breaks a tackle, and he could go to the 20. He's got two guys to hold off, and Kamani Davison is into the end zone with a touchdown for the Red Tailed Hawks. Well, that's a sign of how explosive this offense can be. They have the potential to do that. 
When you have athletes like this, once you get them some open field, they can take off, and he does just that. Hugging the sideline, Kamani Davidson, great speed. That's Eugene Johnson, as is Sonny Domino. 65-yard touchdown, and now that is the first touchdown. Mike Evans has probably been wondering. It's two and a half games coming into this, plus three more quarters. So that's 13 quarters, 13 and a half. There's 4.54 to go in the game. Domino will hold for Leong on the point after. Line drive is good. And with 4.54 to go in the ball game, it is now San Rafael 35 and Tamil Pius 7. So Johnson padding his stats a little with the 65 yard completion. He hasn't thrown a whole lot of passes. But he's been productive with the ones he does complete. Well, he's hit his last three now, all of them to Davison, and he's hit them for 88 yards. He had the 42-yard completion earlier. So you're looking at a guy that on four completions is now thrown for 120 yards, 130 yards, on uh, just for like four out of 10 passing, two interceptions, one touchdown. And 35 to 7. Well, we saw a frenzied comeback from Tam in the, as we, as we said earlier, in the in the Frost Soft game. I uh, I don't think they're going to get quite that close, no matter tonight, no matter they got to recover several onside kicks. But again, it's something that could come up in an important situation later in the game, and it's a chance to work on that if they want. San Rafael seems to be lukewarm on the idea. They got a couple guys of, that would you would expect. Gazzoli and Stewart and Emerson. But they've also got a couple linemen. Once again, next week we will be at Marin Catholic. The Wildcats playing host to the Redwood Giants. But we've still got 4.54 to tick away here. And Leong has his team set. And he kicks it off deep. It's taken by Skazafaba. He heads to the left side, gets a little crack, sheds a tackler, still going, cuts back to the inside before he's dragged down, just shy of the 40-yard line. And a flag comes in right at the end. Hmm. Someone a little too excitable, and Skazafaba getting up somewhat slowly. He's been a workhorse for San Rafael tonight. Here we'll see him taking the kick. Gets a couple pretty decent blocks right here. Cuts back inside, and I didn't see what caused the play. Skaza Faba, 12 carries, 56 yards, rushing the ball. And we've got a personal foul against Tam, so it must have been piling on. That tacks on 15 and brings the ball out close to midfield. Actually across midfield to the Tamil Pius 48-yard line from where it will be first and 10 for San Rafael. And Zach Hansen, still a quarterback. He relieved Underman on the last series. Gives straight ahead, and that's going nowhere. Looked like Ryan Garcia on the carry. We're going to see Ryan Garcia being met by number 69, Kevin Clark. And Clark put the hit on him in a hurry. We are corrected. It was Jose Velasquez on that carry. And Jose lost two yards. Second down and 12, ball back at midfield. The pitch is to number 24, Moses, and he gets back to about the line of scrimmage if there. Everybody getting to carry the ball a little bit tonight. And it'll be third down and 12 as Moses got, or third and 13 as Moses lost one. In San Rafael just trying to run out the clock now. They're out comfortably ahead, 35 to 7, and we're approaching 325 to go in the ball game. Very impressive opening night in the MCAL for the Bulldogs. See, Hansen should get his first pass of the night, and he will. Only to his right, if he can get it off, he will. He won't, and he's going to be sacked. Back down at his 38-yard line. 
loss of about 11 yards. You're going to see Hanson trying to get his first pass off, but he's going to meet uh, Chris Rost right here, 42, drive him into the turf. And Hassani Nomino once again goes back to receive the punt. 240 and counting and Sanderfeld probably will take as much of the 30 seconds that, that they're allowed as, as they can, if not all of it. Scott Zafavo will do the punting. And they do indeed take the delay of game penalty. Comes at 2.23 to go. That's one thing about this game. We haven't seen too many punts. No, we have very few. With all the scoring and turnovers, it's 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 a good thing these punters have other positions on the team. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd never see them. Scott Zafava has played a pretty darn good ball game. Running the ball, and this one he shanks. Goes straight up, and it looks like it's probably going to bounce back. Well, it bounces straight up and is down by Rosenberger on the San Rafael side of midfield. And now there's a scuffle breaking out at midfield. Flag th was thrown. Chris Rose, number 42, got up and said, hey, I was, he immediately said, hey, I wasn't doing anything, which is a pretty good indication he was. But <laughs> as so often happens, the first infraction isn't the one that's seen. It's the second one. <laughs> and we'll see who they catch. The punt was down right around midfield, uh, San Rafael 49, actually. I have to admire the restraint of both teams and that, that that did not develop into something bigger. Ball game like this, a lot of talking going back and forth, it quite easily could have. And after all that, it's a face masking penalty. <laughs> all right, well, I guess Chris Rust was right. He wasn't doing anything. <laughs> See if we can't see what exactly. Well, that was a face mask. It was. <laughs> it was definitely a face mask. And it's a three-point takedown. And Chris was right. He wasn't doing anything. Like he just got his face mask caught on the guy's hand. <laughs> Thirty-five yard line. First and ten for Tam. Two oh eight and counting in the ball game. Pitch goes to Domino. He's got a lot of room. If he can get a block, he turns the corner down the sideline. And Hassani Domino with. Piles up more yardage late here in the ball game. He's down to about the 15 yard line. We're going to see a nice little pitch out right there. And there, you can see at the top of your screen, there's no Sanderfeld defenders until Domino rolls out about 15 yards or more, and then Sanderfeld gets in the picture. Pickup of 20 for Domino. So he's shown flashes of what we expected to see throughout the evening. He's now got 56 yards rushing on 14 carries. But again, you gotta get back to that number that Mike Evans was talking about. He wanted Domino to touch the ball 30 times, either by run or pass. He's, he has not got a pass. He's run 14 times and will return one kickoff. So you're looking at, at half that. Counting special teams, he's touched the ball 15 times with 145 to go. Is that right? 145 to go in the ball game. So they're falling, they're falling far short. I think what killed the, their goal was the first quarter when they only had the ball, I think, for eight plays. And, and they, they fell behind. We've got a dead ball foul, it looks like here, that's going to back the Hawks up even, even further. It'll be first and 25. The ball now back at the 30-yard line. The give deep in the backfield is to number 43, Matt Quinn. And he pulls his way ahead. I, I think you're right, Mike. The, the, the situation in the first quarter, not they only had the ball eight times and they fell or for eight plays and they fell behind. So they, they, they had to change the game plan just a little. And then also in that situation, it's, it's, it's even tougher for Hassani to get his yards because they figure, all right, <laughs> they're down. He's definitely getting the ball now. Right. Gain of three for Quinn on that second and 22. Johnson thinking about throwing, runs up. Now he throws. He overthrows Davison. Kamani was over open. 
pass just a little too tall, and it'll be third and 22. 58 seconds to go in the ball game. For San Rafael, they look like anything but an 0-3 team here this evening. Opportunistic, they got the big play, they, they were able to a couple grind it out type drives, and the defense has played very well. You take away, a, you know, the, the Domino does have 56 yards, but 44 of them have come on two carries. So now you're looking at, at, at take those two carries away, he's carried the ball 12 times for 12 yards. And they've really kept an explosive, other than one play, an explosive offense in check. Well, that's exactly it. I think that was their game plan to do so, and I think they exceeded all their goals. Johnson once again under pressure, rolling to his right and throws deep down the sideline. He's got a man, and it's broken up at the last instant, incomplete. Dan Stewart caught a touchdown pass earlier, and he's playing strong safety and doing a fine job on the coverage. You'll see the Hawks looking to go deep downfield. Two Bulldogs there. Good play. 49 seconds to go now, and it will be fourth and 22. From the 27. They need to get to the five for the first down. I give it to Domino. What the heck? If he breaks it, fine. If not, I might as well at this point at this part of the field. Let, 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 let him let him pad his stats. Well, Johnson's going to get a chance to put it up, and he goes over the middle. It's intercepted. Dan Stewart picks it off. The receiver slips. Stewart bringing it back up the right side. Bounces off a couple tackles and is out to the 35-yard line. Once again, it looks like tempers flare. No flags thrown on this one, I don't believe. The third interception for the Bulldogs. Go with two fumbles, that's five turnovers. You see Johnson looking to throw downfield. Stewart just steps right in the underthrown ball. For his first interception of the night, he's had a good night. Touchdown and interception. Thirty-five seconds to go in the ball game. San Rafael has it at they're 35, the clock is running, and if they want to, all they're going to do is snap it once, and that'll be the ball game. So they will go to one and three. Both teams will be one and three overall on this season. San Rafael one and zero oh in MCAL play, and Tam obviously 0-1, and, and a big game tomorrow, Marin Catholic and San Marin. The give is to number 36, Velasquez. He's dragged down near the sideline, but he stays in bounds. The final seconds tick away, and our final score, the San Rafael Bulldogs victorious by a final of 35 to seven. Some final thoughts? San Rafael made their own breaks. Tam gave them a couple breaks. They took advantage of all of them. Tam could never get started. They, ne they never got out of the gate tonight. Uh, I think they're a better team than they showed. And, you know, hopefully this one game won't hurt them too bad. Well, it's a confidence thing. And I think the, what they've got to look at is they played them even in the second half, 7-7. Seven to seven. And so from a confidence point of view for, for Tam, that's what they've got to look like. Chris Sutterman in the big game, three touchdown passes, a couple of them to Jeff Rosenberger. And the, and the and the San Rafael did what they wanted to do. It's how you have to play a wishbone team. Jump on them early, make them change their game plan, and they did that highly successfully. The MCAL game.